It's Friday, July 3rd, and this is now on HNN. We can shut it down very quickly. Amid the pandemic, this Independence Day weekend will test America's discipline. It's so important to stay home right now so that we can go out later and so that people stop dying. On board a flight to Chicago, we're taking a look at what it's like to fly in the age of coronavirus as we roll into the 4th of July holiday weekend. Bankruptcy filings soar in Hawaii as economic fallout from the pandemic worsens. The president heads to Mount Rushmore for an Independence Day event that's expected to draw thousands. I'm Natalie Brand with why health officials and demonstrators are pushing back. It's uh, going to be a fireworks display like few people have seen. These stories, plus how today's king tides, could be a snapshot of our future shorelines. Coming up on This Is Now. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for watching This Is Now. I'm Jonathan, your director, here alongside Ashley. We haven't got official numbers from the Department of Health regarding coronavirus cases yet, but our sources are telling us it's another big uptick in cases. As soon as we get those official numbers, we'll pass them along to you. Meanwhile, a U.S. judge ruled that Hawaii's mandatory quarantine is reasonable during the public health crisis caused by the pandemic. A group of Hawaii, California, and Nevada residents tried to stop the state's quarantine by filing a lawsuit alleging it's unfair and violates the fundamental right to travel freely. But Judge Jill Otake rejected the claim that the emergency order bans travel because people can still travel to Hawaii. Meanwhile, starting August 1st, passengers will be able to bypass the quarantine if they test negative prior to arriving. And Jonathan, we do have those numbers in now from the Department of Health. Health officials are reporting another death related to COVID-19, as well as another big spike in cases. Hawaii's death toll now stands at 19, and we're awaiting those details about the state's latest fatality. There are also 29 new cases today. We're told 25 of them are on Oahu, two are on Maui, one is on the Big Island, and one is still under investigation. All right, I want to show you a live picture at Ala Moana Beach Park. And all this news comes as we head into the July 4th weekend, and health experts are concerned holiday crowds could help fuel the spread of the virus. We got Chris Martinez with more. Coronavirus cases in Florida continue to skyrocket. The state recorded nearly 9,500 new cases over the past 24 hours, its third highest tally since the pandemic started. It's absolutely the saddest thing, the most unnecessary situation that we're finding ourselves in, and it's behaviorally driven. A curfew goes into effect tonight at 10 p.m. in Miami-Dade, Florida's most populated county. In Texas, face masks are now mandatory in many areas. Hospitals are stretching their ICU capacity. We're seeing a surge in young people who are really just not paying any regard to the risk of this. Do we really have to say hashtag don't kill grandma? People have to realize there are consequences to getting infected and spreading it to people who are vulnerable. They can die. Cases are up nearly 50% here in California over the past two weeks. Several cities are fining people who don't wear masks. The state just banned singing or chanting in places of worship, and most beaches are off limits. That's not stopping some from heading into the surf. I'll take the 98% chance of being, living my life, you know, and I think a lot of people will. Today, Major League Baseball announced it's canceling this month's 2020 All-Star Game set for Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. The 12-time champion of the world, Joey Chestnut! And the annual Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest will go on in New York tomorrow, but with only a third of the normal number of contestants at an undisclosed location and no live audience. Chris Martinez, CBS News, Los Angeles. And don't forget, here at home, Honolulu's mayor is extending the mandate for face coverings to apply just about everywhere outside of the home, including work. That amendment now mandates that when you're indoors, whether you're in a private office building or a public building, a government building, whether you're in an enclosed mall, you must wear a face covering. Now, everyone wears a mask walking down the hall, 
going to get a cup of coffee, um, at all times wearing a mask until you come and sit at your desk where you're not engaging in uh, contact with another individual. Even workers who don't deal with the public have to wear masks around other employees. After Memorial Day gatherings caused the spike in cases, Mayor Caldwell asked the governor to approve the measure ahead of the July 4th weekend. Scientists say it's clear that face coverings help curb the spread of the virus. And so it's my hope with this mandate that most everyone will comply. But where they don't comply, the Honolulu Police Department can give warnings and then citations and then arrest. And for me, that is the last resort. The new rules require face coverings outdoor as well when social distancing isn't possible. Exceptions include exercise, dog walking, and kids under six. Violations are punishable by a fine and jail time, but the mayor said enforcement is the last resort. Meanwhile, as economic fallout from the pandemic worsens, bankruptcy filings in Hawaii soar. Lacey Denise has the details. The surge in bankruptcies comes as a new study found that nearly half of Hawaii's households suffered a significant drop in income during the crisis. Now, most of the filings here are being made by individual residents who have either lost their job or have some of their incomes cut back. And for business bankruptcies, some are predicting that numbers will continue to rise over the next year. I'm afraid the, the wave is nowhere near cresting. This is the beginning of the wave. And uh, I think uh, we're going to see into the next year uh, um, many, many filings. Uh, people are just uh, out of work, especially in the travel industry. And uh, hotel workers have great uncertainty about when they're going to uh, go back to work. The huge surge in filings in June, is, this is a, a function of economic shock, pure and simple. The Bank of Hawaii Foundation surveyed more than a thousand residents. It provided a broad snapshot of the economic impact of the pandemic. You know, two in five reported that they were impacted from a job perspective, whether that's being laid off, furloughed, or having reduced hours because of cutbacks. According to the report, 73% of Hawaii's residents don't think the economy and their overall consumer habits will return to normal within the next seven months. For This Is Now, I'm Lacey Denise. President Trump is headed to Mount Rushmore in South Dakota to kick off the holiday weekend. We've got Natalie Brand with more on what's about to happen. After hitting the golf greens Friday morning, President Trump will soon head to Mount Rushmore for the National Memorial's first fireworks display in 10 years. It's uh, going to be a fireworks display like few people have seen. More than 7,000 attendees are expected, and though the state's governor says face masks will be provided, attendees will not be required to wear them nor social distance. Nobody really knows what, um, what will happen. Um, after this event, if people leave and contract the virus, um, expose all of the visitors. Here in Washington, final preparations are underway for Saturday's Salute to America event, with workers loading up the fireworks in the shadow of the Washington Monument. Military flyovers honoring the cities of the American Revolution will begin over Boston and continue through New York, Philadelphia and Baltimore before flying over Washington, D.C. The White House says frontline workers, members of the military and their families will join administration officials to watch the festivities from the South Lawn. A spokesman says face masks will be provided. The Department of Interior also says more than 300,000 face masks like these will be available for spectators on the National Mall. But Washington, D.C.'s Mayor Muriel Bowser has canceled the city's parade and is encouraging residents to stay home this July 4th. On what's typically a busy campaign week, Native American groups plan to demonstrate at the president's event in South Dakota, while protests against police brutality are expected in Washington Saturday. Natalie Brand, CBS News, The White House. Hawaii native and Illinois Senator Tammy Duckworth, who serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee, says she's blocking more than a thousand military confirmations until she gets assurance Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman's promotion won't be blocked. Vindman was a key witness in President Trump's impeachment inquiry. 
Duckworth's power play is not unusual but comes with some risks. She could be criticized for putting politics over promotions and pay increases for deserving service members. We told you yesterday that Duckworth is being vetted to be Joe Biden's running mate. The number of active COVID-19 cases in the military has doubled in the last month. On June 10th, the Pentagon said there were 2,800 active duty personnel that were diagnosed. As of Wednesday, the number stood at 6,500. In total, the Army has had most of the cases, followed closely by the Navy. Three service members have passed away. Airports and airlines expect the 4th of July weekend to be the busiest travel day since mid-March, but passenger traffic is still down about 75% compared to last year. And if you're planning to fly, it's going to look a lot different. Chris Van Cleve has more. First flight since March. Starts with a temperature check. And before checking in, I had to certify I didn't have a fever or any other COVID symptoms. At the airport, it's plexiglass barriers and reminders to keep your distance, flyers and masks and face shields. Many stores and restaurants remain closed. TSA looks different too. Face covering while on board. I just want to be extra cautious. Wearing gloves and carrying wipes, we met Dana Kaufman at the gate, flying to Chicago to see her parents. Finally get to see them since I haven't seen them during the coronavirus pandemic. Before we got on, the plane was cleaned using an electrostatic fogger like this to quickly disinfect the cabin between flights. Good morning. Boarding was done back to front. Flight attendants greeting you with sanitizing wipes. I brought my own to wipe down the area around my seat. No question, flying is different. Here we are at the start of the 4th of July holiday weekend, and there are dozens of empty seats on this plane. In-flight service is limited. Snack bags and bottles of water. We try to eliminate anything that would pass germs, basically. There's no one here. Yeah. We met United's Chief Communications Officer Josh Ernest at Chicago O'Hare. What are you expecting for 4th of July? We are expecting an, an increase that we have seen leisure travel begin to come back. There's a growing divide over blocking middle seats. Delta, Southwest and JetBlue are limiting capacity. American and United are not. Look, when our competitors talk about blocking middle seats, they're talking about a PR strategy, not a safety strategy. A safety strategy is one that's focused on wearing masks and requiring people to, to wear them correctly. Every airline does social distancing differently. There are no regulations requiring an airline to do it. United notifies flyers when the plane is more than 70% full, allowing them to make a change. United says only about 2% of flyers change their flights. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Reagan National Airport, Virginia. We wanted to take a little bit of time today in the show to talk about something that hasn't really been getting a lot of attention like it would in years past. We're talking about King Tides. To help us understand what's going on, we got Maya Walton here with the UH Sea Grant College Program. Hey Maya, how's it going? It's going good. All right, for those of us who don't know, tell us what King Tides are. Um, King Tides are simply the highest high tides of the year. And these are the predicted tides. So we're talking about the astronomical component of the tide, the tide that's influenced by the position of the sun, the moon, and the earth. So for people who are going out to observe the king tide today, I also encourage them to check out the moon. It's going to be approaching a full moon on Saturday. Well, I, from what I understand from reading up on what you guys do, sort of looking at the king tides can sort of give us a snapshot of what our future shorelines will look at like. Explain that. Yeah, that's exactly right. So these are some of the highest high tides of the year, and they're a great indicator of what future sea level rise will look like on our coastlines. Um, and one of the main aims of the project is to have people collectively understand what climate change impacts look like on a local level. So maybe you hear the, sea level, the word sea level rise and you think of melting ice caps, um, but what this project helps to do is it helps to contextualize it on a really local scale. What does sea level rise look like right here in Honolulu? All right, and so how high will the king tides be today? Could they be destructive at all, or we're not really expecting that? This is what we want people to go out and observe and take photographs of. Um, we're expecting a high tide that might reach three feet today in Honolulu. Um, and so um, some of the impacts that people might keep their eyes peeled for are inundation, um, from ocean flooding, we might get flooding in uh, low elevation places like Mapunapuna. 
maybe some impacts with our storm drains in the coastal areas. But uh, this is the beauty of the project. With the, with the help of volunteers observing different places across Hawaii, we can get a better understanding of what these impacts actually look like. And there really is a way for just anyone can help out with this observation. What can they do? What's the website? What's the application? And how do they do it? We want everyone to go to PacificIslandsKingTides.org. And on the website, there will be a button where it says submit a photo. And this will lead to a page where you can submit photographs, all of your observations. Um, it's pulling GPS data from your phone, the date and the time. All this really important information is being collected through this website, PacificIslandsKingTides.org. And if you don't have time to do it today, it's a busy holiday weekend. There's other dates to come, right? There's other King Tide events in the year to come. Yes, uh, photo surveys for this summer. We're encouraging people to head out July 3rd and 4th. And there's gonna be a second round August 17th and August 18th. And something to keep in mind is the time of the high tide depends on your location. So please go to the website PacificIslandsKingTides.org. We have some really nice tide tables that people can use to understand what time to head out to take the photograph. Maya Walton, thank you so much for joining us on This Is Now. Thanks, Jonathan. All right, let's get you live outside on this Aloha Friday. Lots of clouds up Malka, but as you saw at the top of the show, there's lots of sunshine at the beach. So what's in store for your holiday weekend? Billy V is here with your forecast. Aloha, I'm Billy V sitting in for Guy Hagi on this Friday. Let's take a look at the numbers here. First of all, for your weather and the surf, they are dropping around the island. East and the south facing shores are down to two to four. West side is one to three. Flat to two up on the north shore. Uh, it's a high UV index. It's 12. So what does that mean for you if you're going to be outdoors this weekend? The whole weekend is going to be like this. A lot of sunshine, lighter winds, a few windward and Malka showers, but your daytime high is going to get near 90. It's going to feel like 93, 94, depending on where you are. So make sure that you've got your sunscreen. Make sure that you're hydrating yourself. Seven-day forecast calls for those lighter winds to be today through pretty much Monday. And then... When we get to Tuesday, breezy conditions when the winds pick up 15 to 20 miles per hour. There'll be a mixture of sunshine, mostly sunshine, but a mixture, uh, a mixture of windward and Malka clouds, showers, and when those showers come, they're going to be of the light variety. Have a wonderful weekend. As always, get the latest on air, online, on your mobile device, and at hawaiinewsnow.com. Thank you, Billy. Let's see what the internet's talking about from the feeds, folks. All right, up first, Legos aren't just for kids anymore. I never thought that, by the way. <laughs> the new Lego art building Ooh. sets are specifically geared for older fans like me, um, who've had those fond memories of the blocks from when we were kids. Oh, yeah. The higher end sets include Marvel figures, Star Wars characters, and iconic art figures. I think I saw Marilyn there, a Warhol painting. They go for 120 bucks. Wow. And they don't go on sale until September 1st. That's a good uh, pandemic stay-at-home time killer. It is, but yeah. I feel like Legos have gotten really expensive oh, over the years. Yeah. I And you have to buy the sets now. Mm -hmm. it's, um, you can still buy the variety pack, but I feel like a lot of kids get enticed by, like, ooh, Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, I really yeah. wish I kept mine. I, I think my mom still has mine in my basement. My <laughs> I'm nephew sure play with does. it. Yeah. Everyone, it's Hamilton Friday. The ooh. film version of the hit Broadway musical premieres today on Disney+. Plus. Like the play, the film stars Lin-Manuel Miranda in the lead role. He is also the creator of the Pulitzer Prize winning musical, which also won 11 Tony Awards. Now, the film was supposed to be released in movie theaters in October of next year, but the studio decided to release it early so fans could enjoy it from the comfort of their homes during the pandemic. I know what I'm doing this I weekend. I know. I'm going to watch it on Sunday, I think. I think I'm busy until then. I didn't even put the Independence Day connection together till now, but that's oh. why they released it. Yes. Got it. Okay. Uh -huh. All right, guys, if you're into space travel, we were telling you about UFO Day yesterday, but check this out. A hot air balloon, they're getting a huge upgrade. A Florida company, they call this Spaceship Neptune, and it's designed to transport Whoa. a pilot and eight travelers in a pressurized capsule 100,000 feet up into the oh, air man, I don't for know. six hours. <laughs> 
Okay, yeah, right. It looks pretty fun. It, none of this is even going to get tested to 2021. They're not even going to have people on it. But if it all gets approved and goes through, it would cost you 120000 125000 That right. makes more sense. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. cool. And Major League Baseball has canceled its 2020 All-Star Game because of the pandemic. It's the first time since 1945 when travel restrictions from World War II kept the game from taking place. Now this year's game was scheduled to be hosted by the Dodgers in Los Angeles. So the Dodgers will host the 2022 event because the Atlanta Braves are already hosting next year. Right get some good news yeah and here at home another milestone for reopening most team sports can resume in city parks on oahu casey lund takes a look yeah you know today is a big milestone in getting back to some sense of normalcy uh, for kids really too and that's what's so important about uh, allowing team sports to resume in a competitive fashion june 19th a lot of sports leagues were allowed to begin practicing but today again is a big day as uh, competitions can now resume between teams i want to introduce reggie kirkman right. the state director for hawaii for the youth, ba youth basketball of america uh, i want to talk a little bit about the importance of sports and uh, your guys's league got shut down when COVID really got it real in March. Yes. You were mid mid league or mid season. Mid season. You guys are about ready to start your summer league. I mean, kids have been cooped up. How important is it to get them back out? We well, brain activity. They got to come out of the house. They actually got to engage other people, human beings. They got to be able to exercise. We can't fight obesity all our lives, and they just got to be able to communicate and deal with different situations. So by getting out of the house, they start to interchange with of the people in the community. What's going to be different about your league moving forward? I think the most important, biggest change, you're going outside now. You kind of have to. Right. Well, the kids got to get knee pass and arm pass because they're competitive. This is a competitive yeah. sport, okay? But we're going to have to social distance around the court with the parents. We have to set up hand sanitation uh, departments or chairs and tables, um, wipes, disinfectants, uh, the little uh, the gun where you take your temperature. Yeah. Everything's going to be set up for the parents and anybody who wants to use it. This is going to be open to and mask also. So we're going to do that and it's going to be on a we're going to run like five games in a day. So that's has, that station has to be up and running. Can I ask you just how, how so far kids and, and, co and your coaches in the league are responding to all these changes? I mean, I think all of us are, no, nobody really wants to wear a mask all the time. It, right. This is, it's challenging, but how are, how are people taking it, do you feel? Actually, the, the turnout is really great. It's really great. Uh, we stopped at 38 teams and presently we have 25 teams coming back. Okay. So everybody's ready to go back and we understand the risk of what's going to happen or what may happen. But the risk over the reward is is minor. Yeah. It's really minor. Before we go, can you just yeah. give me the website for Youth Basketball of America Hawaii so folks can learn more and, and right. maybe uh, uh, find out some, some information? YBOHawaii.org. Very good. Reggie Kirkman, uh, yeah. now, I, earlier on uh, Hawaii News Now, yeah. we, we, uh, we shot baskets for breakfast. Neither of us did very good. <laughs> you said your kids are going to give you a hard time, so we're going to yeah. see if we can redeem ourselves right. here we're around good the, to go. the free throw oh, line. Flat ball All right, time. yeah, he's got a flat ball. I've got a tiny one, but we're going to... Oh, there it is. There and... <laughs> oh, okay. Right. Reggie, uh, I'm buying breakfast. <laughs> Reggie Kirkman, thanks so much for being with Good us job. this thanks, morning. Sir. Appreciate it. For now, we'll send it back guys. to you guys right. in studio. Okay. Awesome see. job, Daisy. <laughs> Way to go, man. Let's get some more good news, right? Uh, that's right. Finally for today, here's something for those like me who missed the thrill of traveling. Flights to nowhere. At Taipei's airport, customers get a fake itinerary. They get boarding passes. They go through security, even immigration, mm -hmm. and they get on an actual plane. Flight attendants even go through their normal safety routine, but the plane just never takes off. What's up with the T-Rex? You know oh. what? That's like the worst part of traveling, I think. I would not be down with that. No, thank you. <laughs> Hey guys, we made it through another week. Thank you so much for joining us here on This Is Now. We'll be back on Monday. Have a good one.